So I think that this type of capability pays for itself very quickly, and it gives us the capability to dream and to create things that we couldn't with these other programs that limit the imagination. So for me, I think the tool, a smart tool like this, is invaluable. So if anyone else has some questions, please type in. But we're now at 7.45, and it's just about the end of our, our webinar. I don't want to keep you too long. I have recorded this presentation, and the PD Solutions people are going to have this on their website for your use. So you can download it, and you can tell your friends about it. And if you also have more type request for this type of webinar to see a particular type of system done, please contact your PD Solutions people. They'll be glad to help you with this, and we'll be glad to set up a go-to meeting specifically for you to demonstrate this type of capability. You know, one of the things is that th there is a good question here. How easy it is it to learn the program? Well, this is one of the easiest programs to learn because if you used the CAD system before, you, you usually feel comfortable with this type of interface. This is a very similar interface to a sketch utility in like Google SketchUp or in, in SolidWorks, for instance, where you create these type of 2D sketches and turn them into 3D sketches. Uh, in terms of being able to interpret the results, yes, there is some capability that has to go on to understand how to use the program to create the output results, how to see how a surface reflects, how much it absorbs, how much it transmits. So. The whole thing is, is that, yes, it may take some time to, to get accustomed to the program, but it's a very, very short learning curve. And we do have training, and we do have these webinars, and we're going to have video training coming up in the next year, which will teach you most of what you have to use and learn to use the product. So I think that's about all for, for this time. Um, one of the things that... Um, I think David Burns asking me is that what is the goal of the optimizer? The goal of the optimizer is to let you quickly have an idea, sketch it in, and then come up with a solution. And what the, the big thing here is that it allows you to go outside the box. Typically, people are always thinking, you know, here's, here's the system. I'm going to now, instead of using incandescent bulbs, I'm going to use LEDs. Will the system work? And you can quickly throw an LED in there and say immediately, well, you know, I've got all this light going out in all directions, and I can't, I can't actually control that light. So in this system, I would like to be able to control all the light that's going out, but I, I can see I, I'd like to have it all go out directly upwards. And if I have an LED and it's going, can I, can I verify that? Sure. Look, I've got, I'm getting that going. I've got all the light going out there. Well, I'm missing a little bit here. So I can change this, this optimization a little bit and try to make sure that that light's also contained. So we can go through and quickly do that. So the whole goal here is to give us a tool that we've never had before, a smart tool that allows us to quickly come up with ideas that we may not have been able to use in some of these other interfaces that are spreadsheet-based or that are just so difficult to use that we just can't. We had to spend more time learning how to use the product than learning how to use a quick tool like this. So I'm going to... Uh, talk a little bit now about scatter, scatter modeling in the program. Um, in terms of TracePro, there's a lot of capability in terms of scatter. And how you define these things is by specifying how Lambertian a surface is or how, how much it actually follows the reflective portion of the scatter. And it's very simple, for instance, to create a, a primitive solid here, which we'll say is a block. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in on this block, and I'm going to rotate a little bit. I'm going to right-click over here, and I'm going to rotate it around the x-axis 45 degrees. And what that's going to do is I'm going to get light to go downward. So I'm going to have light hit this. I'm going to create a quick source and turn that on. So I'm going to make a very tiny source. I'm going to put it out here to Z location of minus 2, and I'm going to modify that source so it's out there. And if I then throw the light into the source, without any surface properties whatsoever, the program is now going to just send light right through it, as we can see here. Now, I'm now going to do a couple things. How easy is it to say that this is a perfect reflector? Well, the block is made out of six surfaces since it's a solid. So to make it into a reflective surface, all I need to do 
is go into the surface uh, portion of the dialog and the apply properties. Go to perfect mirror. And then ray trace again. And you can see the light will now split. It's going to go up and down. Now, if I now put scatter on this particular surfaces, all I need to do is then define that. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to define a perfect white surface. And so what happens here is that I go from having all the light be reflected to a light that's now scattering. So now when I ray trace, the program then creates all of this light that can scatter around towards it. Now, we can get into a lot more capability of this. We can do phosphor layers. We can do diffuseness. And we can even put targets. And the program has something called importance sampling, which figures out what the integral is of where all the light goes for a scatter model. And then if we have little targets, we can then do importance sampling and say only send the light to those targets. And it then flux weights the rays and does that correctly. So you can set all this up in the program. It is possible, for instance, to set up a whole LED die with fluorescence uh, setup. And I hope I can find that quickly for you here. Here we are, LED phosphor. And then that allows you to create the complete everything from the solder, uh, solder pads uh, to the phosphor layers. And you can see that. You can see what the different uh, emitting surfaces are and the phosphor layers. Here's the LED phosphor right here. And I'm going to go into the uh, program where you can go into the properties, look at fluorescence. And you can see what the specification is for the quantum efficiencies of this particular LED phosphor. And this is how you would set it all up. Are there any other questions at this time? And by the way, there's a real nice paper on the website uh, to take a look at some of these things. And uh, if you have a question about uh, these sort of things, I would be glad to send you papers that describe how to completely set these type of applications up and to analyze them. So it looks like uh, we everyone's uh, had their questions answered. I'm going to stop the recording at uh, this point in time, and it will be available. Let uh, David Byrne know if you have any further questions, and I'll be glad to answer them. And thank you very, very much for attending. Um, thank you all. Bye. Bye right now.